Let's talk rich, successful, wealthy, however you want to define it. But what is the one thing that all these people have a really good understanding of, that all these people have done and are probably still doing? Because this is really an ongoing process and it's an approach, it's a method that you need to be using, assuming of course you want to be successful, you want to get rich, you want to be wealthy. Whatever your goal is, whatever word you want to use, you need to be viewing the world, you need to be approaching the world in this way. And I'm not gonna turn this into a big old economics lesson, but there's a couple foundational economic principles here that you need to realize. And first and foremost, you are a business owner. You are a CEO, you are an entrepreneur. Whatever you wanna call yourself, you are. I'm so, well, I don't wanna be a business owner, too bad, you are. I don't have a product or service to sell, yes you do. And that's the main point of this video and this is the one thing that all these successful people realize and that they're really good of. Now, quick economics, just very, very basic. There's an economic term called labor. You've probably heard of it, right? Manual labor, labor cost. But what is actually labor? Well, the way labor works is this. You have somebody over here known as the buyer. For those of you in the markets, you know, in the stock market, this should sound relatively familiar. And then over here, you have the seller. And in between these is right here, labor, okay? Now what is labor? Labor at its core is this right here. Time, meaning there is a seller, there is a buyer, and they are going to negotiate over time. And that's what we all do. That's what we're all thinking about. Now, we don't necessarily look at it as you're negotiating over time, but that is what is playing out is you need to, if you want somebody to do something for you, what now, now if they're doing a favor, if they're volunteering, that's different. But Assuming that they're in a for-profit business and you want them to do something for you, what are you actually doing? Well, you are buying their time to do something. For an example, if I need some plumbing thing fixed, I can either do it myself or I can either go buy somebody else's time to fix the plumbing issue for me, right? That, that's what you're doing. You are going out there and purchasing labor. So what does this have to do with getting rich? What does this have to do with being successful? Well, you know what? If you want to get good money, if you want to make good money, what do you think you should do when it comes to what you're actually selling? Do you think you should make your time more or less valuable? Well, of course, the obvious answer would be, well, I, I want to be able to sell my service, my product, which again is your time for as much money as possible, right? That that's common sense. So how do you do this though? What are the ways that you can make your product, again, your service time valuable? Well, there's two ways that you can go about it. You can go about it via skill or willingness. So let's just start with willingness. What do I mean by willingness? Well, you know what? Go out there, there's a big dumpster, there's a big foreclosure. There's a big, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, eviction. So there's all sorts of, you know, grimy stuff in there. There's all sorts of trash. It needs to be gutted. It needs to be cleaned out. I mean, it's a filthy situation. How many people are willing to go and do that? Uh, not that many. And this is why, if I were to go back and get started, that's why I would start a dumpster business. The business not of selling dumpsters, but of filling the dumpsters. Meaning, I would sell my time. So I would go to, let's say here, is a real estate investor. So a real estate investor has a, has a prop, property. They've had to evict the tenant. The tenant leaves it a disaster. Just garbage all over the place. It smells. They've you know punched holes in the wall. I mean, a lot of stuff needs to be done. But this real estate investor, I mean, they have other things that they need to be doing. They need to be out there searching for other deals. They need to be doing other things with their time. So what do they need to do? Well, they, that project still needs to get done. That dumpster needs to get filled up, right? Because that house needs to get emptied. So what are they gonna need to do? Well, they're gonna need to go and purchase somebody else's time to do it. They will need somebody to do some manual labor. 
So how many people though want to do that? Not that many people, which is why you can get well above minimum wage to fill up a dumpster. And if I were just getting started, I'd be finding those real estate investors. Hey, let me, let me fill up the dumpster. You just get the dumpster, it shows up, I'll clean out the houses. Because here's the cool thing is, let's just say you're looking at a project, that project you're, you say is, ah, that'll pay, probably take me 10 hours. So if you think, you know what, all right, I wanna make $20 an hour. $20 per hour, and if you're estimated at 10 hours, that's $200 you could charge the buyer for what? For your time. That is a great deal. As a real estate investor myself, I would gladly pay you $200 to fill up a dumpster and clean out a house. So, I mean, I would argue you're undercutting yourself. Well, what about $30 an hour? That's $300. I would gladly pay you. I would gladly purchase your time for $300 to clean out a big thing, to clean out a big you know, construction site or eviction or, or whatever. Now, of course, it reaches it where it no longer becomes, no, 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 I, I don't wanna purchase your time for that much. That's way too much. But just by being willing, by having the willingness to get out there, get your hands dirty, get nitty gritty, you make your time more valuable. You are increasing the amount of money you can get for your time. So that's one way you can enhance your one product and service that we all have, that we're all business owners over. The other way is skill. So this is more so uh, what I did back in college. And the question here becomes, all right, if I go and learn about something, is this something going to make it more expensive to purchase my time? So look at it like this. I went and got an engineering degree. In order for companies to wanna purchase my time, or you know, in regular people's terms, hire me, what, what do they need? Well, engineers, they need to be, they're gonna have to pay me well above minimum wage. If you go and you get a skill such as accounting or nursing, or a dental hygienist. Well, yeah, you know what? Those are skills that are in demand. And when those skills are in demand, what's gonna be happening? Well, there's gonna be people out there that need to purchase your time because people want that skill. So when a lot of people want that skill, guess what? You can charge more for your time. That's why those sorts of jobs are well above minimum wage. So you get a good skill, but be careful. If you decide, you know what? I'm gonna to go to college and I'm gonna get a degree in the art of Roman bobsledding. Do you think there's that many buyers out there that would like to purchase your time for something in the world of Roman bobsledding? Of course not. So be very careful, for the, especially if you're young when you're going to college, really ask yourself, is this degree I'm getting, is it actually going to increase the value of my time? Because I tell you right now, and the, 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 the data is out there, just look at the student debt crisis, there are lots of people out there putting themselves into debt to do nothing for their time. It does not enhance their time at all. Now, sure, I suppose if you get a degree in you know, Roman bobsledding, you could maybe become a professor, but uh, that's, those are gonna be very few and far jobs, right? Or in other words, the job market for that is gonna be very small. And when there's basically small job market or no job market, guess what? People, there's not gonna be any sort of desire for your time. So remember, that's how you get rich. You need to be thinking, how can I make my time worth as much as possible? And when you do that, you're gonna notice, wow, you're gonna start making more money. Now, I'm not saying this is easy, especially when it comes to willingness. Cleaning out and picking up you know, stinky, who knows what from some you know, eviction house and throwing it into a dumpster, yeah, that, that's not gonna be the most pleasant experience, but you know what? That's your advantage because you are willing to go out there and get your hands dirty. And not a lot of people are, are willing to do that. A lot of people just wanna sit there and do certain things and that's fine if that's their comfort level, but guess what? Their time just isn't gonna be as worth as much as yours. So that's why they get paid minimum wage and you get paid up you know, 20, 30, maybe even $40 an hour to fill up some sort of dumpster. So keep that in mind. You are a business owner. You are an entrepreneur, you are a CEO. Your service, your product is your time itself. You go and sell this. Employers, and here's the, here's the great thing, if you make, if you're really willing or you have a high demand skill, then all of a sudden you have this. Because remember, capitalism, right? People compete, that's what capitalism is all about. So in all actuality, what you have is you have all kinds of buyers that want your time. So if you have something, well now you're gonna be able to get there 
and you could have multiple job offers. I mean, I still remember back in college uh, because I was in a very niche uh, type of engineering. But like, yeah, you know what? You'll probably have multiple job offers. Where do multiple job offers come from? Well, because you have lots of buyers out there seeking your time and they need to make their offer as good as possible. Okay, well, we'll throw in an extra week of vacation. Oh, well, we'll match your 401k for this. And it becomes a bidding war over here. I mean, you have all these people. I run a company. I need this product made. I need something designed. I need this, that, or the other. I want to buy your time to do it. And they're going to compete assuming you make your time as worth as much as possible. And that's how you get ahead in life. It's, it's really as simple as that. What can you be doing to increase the value of the product that you offer to the world, that product being your time? So get out there and start to think. You can either be super willing or you can obtain a skill that actually has demand out there in the marketplace. And you're gonna notice money starts coming in quite a bit faster. So if you enjoyed this video though, I realized it wasn't necessarily about trading and the stock market uh, in general, but again, I can't trade my account, all right? You know, I can't fund my trading account. Well, I don't know, maybe you should make your time a little bit more valuable so you can sell it for more money. And when you can sell your time for more money, then you can, you know, fund your trading account that much more. But regardless, if you enjoyed these videos, hit that like button below. That's a, a quick way to communicate that to me. Also, down below, questions, comments, suggestions. I love to hear. If you've ever watched any of my past videos, you know that I, I reply to comments. Uh, and I try to reply to all of them. So if you do leave anything below, I will reply. And then finally, check out the channel as a whole. If you like what you see, then be sure to hit that red subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a subscriber to the channel. But again, you are the CEO of your time. Make it as valuable as possible so that you can go out there and sell it for top dollar. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.